In the heart of Essos, there lies a boundless grassland that some consider to be the birthplace of all civilization. A land where the first true towns were formed, and with them, petty kingdoms that rose and fell before the means existed to record their deeds in history. For a time, the Dragon Lords too ruled here, and great cities sprouted from the steppes and plains. When Valyria fell to the doom and all of Essos erupted in a century of blood, they fell one by one, consumed by a force for which the land is now named, the Dothraki. Perhaps the most successful culture to have ever inhabited the vast interior of Essos, the Dothraki have emerged as its undisputed rulers. They are a nomadic race of warriors, known for their complete mastery over their horses, which makes them the greatest riders the world has ever seen. The Dothraki are hardly a united people, and instead rove across all of Essos in hordes called Kalisars. These vary greatly in size, ranging from a few dozen riders to great hosts tens of thousands strong. They are led by a chieftain granted the title of Kal. The more powerful and feared the Kal, the larger his Kalisar. His wife is known as a Khaleesi, while his heir is named Kalaka. All are accompanied in their daily routines by Kos, known to foreigners as blood riders. The bond between Akal and his blood riders runs deeper even than the oaths sworn by the Kingsguard to whoever sits on the Iron Throne of Westeros. They act as guards, brothers, shadows, and friends to the Kal, and should they fail in their duties to protect him, are expected to avenge his death before taking their own lives. The largest Kalasars are divided into groups known as Kaz, each led by one of the Kal's captains. These are generally loyal, but follow strength above all. A call must be ruthless and cunning, willing to deal with any who might challenge his authority. As such, the call is usually considered the strongest or fiercest warrior by all in the Kalasar. Should a call either fall in battle or fail to defend his position, his captains will fight among themselves to take his place. The heir of any fallen call will almost always be killed, so as to not remain a rival, while the widowed Khaleesi will be sent to join the Dosh Kaleen. The Dosh Kaleen enjoy the greatest honor and status amongst the Dothraki. They act as seers, foretelling the future and interpreting omens. So revered are the Dosh Kaleen that even the most powerful call will heed their guidance. These widowed Khaleesi are the sole permanent inhabitants of Vyas Dothrak, the only city of the Dothraki people and the sacred heart of their civilization. Primitive by Westerosi standards, the city has broad windswept streets paved in grass and mud, lined on either side by crude thatchwork buildings. These are built and maintained not by the Dothraki themselves, but rather a legion of slaves brought to Vyas Dothrak from across the continent. The greatest structure is known as the Horse Gate, two gigantic bronze statues that form the entrance to the city. They are lined on either side by broken monuments and symbols from a hundred different nations or religions, brought to the city by victorious Kalasars, a true testament to the range and power of the conquests. A type of trade exists within the city, but is conducted almost entirely by foreigners. The Dothraki neither buy nor sell, considering it to be unmanly, if they even understand the concept at all. Instead, the Dothraki exchange gifts, gifting their captives to the slaver cities, for example, and receiving gifts from the slavers in return. This form of trade does not lend itself well to negotiation, and those who choose to deal with the Dothraki must do so delicately. Many cities have learned to give lavishly to every call who passes, lest they draw their wrath. In battle, they are without equal, relentless, and utterly fearless. They fight exclusively from horseback, wielding curved blades known as arachs, whips, and curved bows that greatly outrange those used in the Seven Kingdoms. They are the undisputed masters of mounted warfare, with even the famed Knights of the Vale paling in comparison. 
While on the attack, they unleash shrill battle cries, and their warriors are often called Dothraki screamers by outsiders. The Dothraki hold an utter contempt for infantry, and will almost always attack them head-on in an attempt to ride them down, even in a situation where the defenders might be easily outflanked. This can lead the Dothraki to behave predictably in battle, but their sheer ferociousness is typically enough to overwhelm any foe. Individual Dothraki will braid their hair after their first victory, and bells are added to mark each successive triumph. The braid is only cut when a Dothraki warrior is defeated in battle, so that the world might know his shame. Very few will ever die with their braids never having been cut. Even above braided hair, the Dothraki consider the ability to ride a horse as the basic marker of social status. Anyone unable to ride is seen as the lowest of the low, without honor or pride. The relationship between the Dothraki and their horses is unlike anything else in the world, forming the center of their customs, superstitions, and even diet. They mistrust any water their horses cannot drink, and hate or fear the ocean, which they refer to as the poison water. Their religion, too, is centered around a great stallion, said to part the grass and claim all those who have died, so they might join his starry Kalasar and ride forever in the Nightlands. The history of such a nomadic people is difficult to trace. Their ancestors are believed to have come from the lands beyond the Bone Mountains, and since the Doom of Valyria, they have claimed the great grasslands of Essos as their own. The Kingdom of Sarnor, the cities of the Kothi in the Red Waste, and Ibanese settlements within the kingdoms of Ithakevron all have fallen beneath the hooves of successive Khals and their Kalasars. The free cities along the narrow sea remain wary of the Dothraki, but confident that any threat can be stemmed by gifts and honors. In Westeros, the Dothraki are discounted entirely, to be feared only if they teach their horses to run on water. Strange tales have emerged from the east, however. Red priests proclaim that Azor Ahai has been born anew, while a three-headed dragon has been spotted in marine, and a tall, twisted thing with one black eye and ten long arms now sails on a sea of blood to meet it. Others say the Dothraki's own prophecy has come to pass, and the call of all calls has risen. If the tales are true, soon he will unite all the Dothraki into a single Kalasar, and together ride to the ends of the earth. The Templin Institute investigates alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to directly support us, vote in polls to determine future topics, and receive some cool rewards, please consider pledging to our Patreon page.